is me, Miss Nicole, or Nicole, whichever you prefer to call me. And this for this first page Fridays, we are going to be thinking about water survival stories. So we're still in the summer. We're still going on the kick of ocean of possibilities. And so I have three titles to share with you. Um, two are a little more serious, and one's just a fun survival story. We're going to start off with the one that you can actually find in our juvenile fiction room called Deep Water. Sink or Survive, Wat Key by Wat Key. And so I normally read the first page and if the, para if the paragraph on the first page goes on to the second page, I do finish that up. Um, before, But I start off by reading the description of it. So this one is, it's the most important rule of scuba diving. If you don't feel right, don't go down. So after her father falls ill miles off the coast of Alabama, 12-year-old Julie Sims must take over and lead two of his clients on the dive while her father stays behind in the boat. When the client, a reckless boy around Julie's age, and his equally foolhardy father disregard Julie's instructions during the dive, she's quickly realized she's in over her head. But she has no idea what kind of disaster awaits once she services. <clears throat> So I like this book because it also starts off with the different um, things you need to scuba dive. One, the GP has beeped, signaling our arrival at the dive site. Dad slowed down our old 29-foot trawler, the Barbie doll, and I sat up and peered through the windows of the wheelhouse. We lost sight of the land over an hour ago. Nearly 30 miles off the coast of the Gulf Shores of Alabama, there was nothing to see above the waterline except for an endless expanse of swells simmering in the sunlight. But off our port side, I saw a swarm of fish descending a column through, um, in a column through the jade-colored water. You're right, I said to him. There's fish all over it. Somewhere in the depths below were two army tanks, government surplus from Vietnam. Three years before, my dad, Gibson Sims, had been hired to tow them out uh, on a barge and drop, push them into the water where they sank to the seafloor to create an artificial fish habitat. Then, through an unfortunate occurrence that had nothing to do with him at all, the coordinates were lost, and the tanks presumably abandoned forever beneath over 100 feet of water. So that is the beginning of Deep Water by Watke. The next one I want to share with you is in the YA room. Um, this one is meant for a little bit older of a teen. It's called Where the World Ends by Geraldine McCoffrin, I believe. McCoffrin. I should have looked it up before we started. But what is, like if I mispronounce something, that's like normal for me, right? <laughs> Every summer, Quill and his friends are put ashore on a remote sea stack to hunt birds. But this summer, no one arrives to take them home. Surely nothing but the end of the world can explain why they've been abandoned. Cold, starving, and clinging to life in the grip of the murderous ocean. How will they survive such a forsaken place of stone and sea? Jodney McCoverin's first young adult novel since Michael, the Michael L. Prince award-winning The White Darkness is an extraordinary story of fortitude, endurance, tragedy, and survival set against the unforgettable backdrop of savage beauty. So this one actually has some maps in the beginning, if you're interested. One, crossing over. His mother gave him a new pair of socks, a puffin to eat on the voyage, and a kiss on the cheek. God will keep you safe, Quilliam, but he will not keep you clean. You must do that yourself. Happily, she did not try to hug him close. He shook hands with his father, who remarked quite amicably, the floor needs digging out. You can give me a hand when you get back. Then Quill walked down to the boat. His parents followed, followed on behind, of course, but the goodbyes were done and out of the way. Besides, he would be back in a week or three. They were only going out one of the sacks to harvest a summer of plenty, plenty, bird meat, eggs, feather, oil. It was a blade sharp August day and the sea burned black by the sun's brightness. And no, there were no omens hinting at the trouble ahead. Hitra people noticed th such things. Clouds did not split open and let fall bloods of, drops of blood. Someone would remember that. No senator bird settled on anyone's roof. A gulf flew over and dropped its mess on Mr. Kane. But that was nothing out of the ordinary. Who won it if they could? But no signs. No dead omens. Okay. 
and that was the first part of Where the Worlds End by Geraldine McCoffin. And now for something on a bit of a lighter note, this one is called um, Beauty Queens by Libby Bray. Survival of the fittest. The, the 50 contestants in the Miss Teen Dream Pageant thought this was going to be a fun trip to the beach where they could parade in their state appropriate costumes and compete in front of the cameras. But sadly, their airplane had another idea. Crashing on a desert island and, and leaving the survivors stranded with little food, little water, and practically no eyeliner. What's a beauty queen to do? Continue to practice for a talent portion of the program or wrestle snakes to the ground? Get a perfect tan or learn to run wild? And what should happen when a pirate show up? Welcome to the heart of the non-exfoliated darkness. Your tour guide, none other than Libby Bray, the hilarious, sensational Prince Award winning author of A Great and Terrible Beauty and Going Bovine. The result in this novel is a novel that will make you laugh, make you think, and make you never see beauty the same way again. A word from your sponsor. This book begins with a plane crash. We do not want you to worry about this. According to the U.S. Department of Unnecessary Statistics, your chances of dying in a plane crash are one and a half million, whereas your chances of losing your bathing suit bottoms in a strong tide are two to one. So all in all, it's safer for you to fly than to go to the beach. As we said, this book begins with a plane crash, but um, the survivor, there are survivors. You see, already ha it's a happy tale. There are all beauty contestants. You do not know to, need to know their names here, but you will get to know them. They are all such nice girls. Yes, they are nice, happy, shining, patriotic girls who never have interest in, in baton, who happen to have interest in baton twirling, sign languages, AIDS prevention in the animal population, the ancient preparation of pompadam, feminine firearms, interpretive dance, and sequence. Such a happy story and shiny too. This story is brought to you by the corporation because your life can always be better. We at the corporation would like you to enjoy the story, but please be vigilant about while reading. If you should happen to notice anything suspicious in the coming pages, do alert the proper authorities. Remember, it could be anything at all, a subversive phase, an improper thought or feelings let out in a genie bottle of oppression, an idea that challenges the status quo, the suggestion that life may not be what it appears to be, and that all you've taken for granted, malls, shopping, the relentless pursuit of elusive happiness, prescription drug ads, those annoying <clears throat> perfume samples in the magazines that make your eyes water, the way anchormen and women shift easily from the jovial laughter of a story about a dog that has hula hoops to a grave report of a bush crash that has left five uh, dead teenagers dead, maybe, maybe no more consequential than the tattered hem of a dream leaving you with a bottomless free fall of feeling. This is the sort of thing we are warning you about. So that's just the introduction to the introduction. So again, the three things I wanna share with you is this one is called Deep Waters uh, by Wat Key. This is called Where the World Ends by Geraldine McCoffrin. And this is called Beauty Queens by Libby Bray. If you're interested in finishing these titles, I will put the, the links to them in our catalog below and you can check them out. Thanks for spending some time with me. Bye.